Hey, how you guys doing? Welcome back to another episode of Soldiers Talk the Podcast. I'm your host, Staff Sergeant McPherson, and on this show, we discuss military topics with current and prior service members. Today, I have a special guest with me. I have Command Sergeant Major Brown. How you doing, Sergeant Major? Hey, I'm doing outstanding. Hey, I really appreciate you having me on your show. It really means a lot. Oh, no problem, Sergeant Major. Uh, Sergeant Major, uh, I just want to uh, kind of start off by uh, kind of introduce yourself to the people and let them know like where you're from and stuff like that. Oh, no worries, no worries. My name is Command Sergeant Major James Eric Brown. I'm from a little place called Bennisville, South Carolina. Came in the Army um, in May of 2000. Uh, since then, been deployed 10 times on several assignments across the world. Uh, now it kind of culminating here as the uh, 261st MMB uh, SAR major. Um, probably will be retiring after my next assignment, as that'll probably put me at the 24 year mark and do some great things out in the civilian world. Okay, so I'm going to start off by saying, like, uh, what made you join the military? So, to be very honest with you, I had, when I was in the 11th grade, you know, I had signed up for the National Guard and You know, so the intent was to go to school and it was a, you know, major nursing and minor in in music as I wanted to be a band teacher. But as I didn't necessarily get uh, the support for family for school. So after working like three jobs trying to put myself through school, I just got super tired and I was really good at, you know, being a soldier. So I came on active duty um, to kind of relieve some of the stress I was going through as it wasn't that stressful in the time when I joined the army. Um, and I've been here ever since, you know, I've been here for 22 years. Okay. What was your, uh, primary MOS when you first came in? Sorry, major. So when I first came in and I hate to say this cause now I'm gonna date myself. I was a 91 Bravo, which was a combat medic. Um, that evolved to 91 whiskey, uh, now to 68 whiskey, which is healthcare specialist. Okay. So do you feel like your leadership uh, trained you well, Sergeant Major? So I will tell you, when I first came in the uh, Army, I always credit uh, Sergeant First Class Billy Hallmark, retired. Um, when I first came in the Army, I didn't really have leadership at my first unit. I had, you know, I was surrounded by specialists, good people, but didn't provide that, you know, those, those life lessons, that laser focus that you would normally get from, you know, your NCOs. So Saw First Class Hallmark came into my life and really changed it. Um, He was that catalyst that the reason why I'm here today that I try to give back. He is that guy that's responsible for me, like working tirelessly trying to give back to other soldiers um, that need my assistance or don't need my assistance. Okay. uh, The reason I asked you that, Sergeant Major, because this uh, episode is going to be about leadership. Okay. So, okay. so uh, we want to just give the people your take on leadership. And uh, so I want to ask you, what makes a great leader to you, Sergeant Major? So in my, in my mind's eye, what makes a great leader is, uh, you know, there's this aspect of leadership called servant leadership. Um, the reason why, Sergeant McPherson, I'm here is because we have folks like yourself who are the next generation who's up and coming. Um, a servant leader, so there's there's – two types of leaders, right? Or two types of um, pieces to leadership, right? You have hard power and soft power. NCOs, we have soft power, right? Our leadership is more influential. It's more, um, uh, uh, you know, revering, you know, that person. Like, you know, when you hear junior soldiers talk, they talk about like, hey, you know, I really like Sergeant so-and-so, Corporal so-and-so's, or First Sergeant so-and-so style, you know, it's, you know, it's about inspiring. And frankly, if you can't inspire anymore, it's time to retire. So inspire, retire. Another uh, great Sergeant Major told me that, Sergeant Major Maldonado. For me, I've been given so much. When you reach a certain point in your military career as a non-commissioned officer, the, t- the tables turn, it's time for you to give. It's time for you to give back. Um, and I've been, I probably spent probably the latter of the last 15 years just giving back all the important things that were given to me. Um, uh, as a soldier, and um, and that's why I'm still here to this day. Okay, so Sergeant Major, uh, I know you mentioned servant leadership. So, mm-hmm. how would you describe your leadership style, if you don't mind? So, my leadership style is more so. 
the the typical Sergeant Major or the trope that we fall under is that that grumpy old man who uh, who's very brusque, very unapproachable, very uh, I'm not going to say confrontational, but you know, you just you know, most people see the Sergeant Major and they split. Well, my leadership style is more of a empathetic slash uh, approachable, affable, if you will. And with that, I'm more focused on like. How are you doing? Because by certain things and showing, you know, showing that I'm human, showing my empathetic side of stuff like that, um, normally I get a form of critical information that I receive from soldiers and able to assist them further. Um, sometimes, you know, it's just a pleasant, hey, how you doing? Uh, how's everything? How's the family? Keep it moving. And sometimes it's like, hey, I'm not doing well, Sergeant Major. I need help. I'm like, okay, how can I help you? All right. Um, and I go for that. I never really shy away from turning a soldier around. Um, you know, I always try to make myself available for soldiers. Understand that, you know, there's meetings, there's all this other stuff that happens um, with, you know, with the day-to-day of the job. But, like, you know, someone had made time for me, and that's the reason why I'm here. So I just find it, you know, like I got to pay pave that way forward you know, and make time for others. So that way they get what they, hopefully I can help them out with what they need in their careers. Okay. Sorry, Major. With that being said, uh, PT is important. Mm -hmm. So as a leader, how important is PT to you? So PT is a very important, um, because like I said, part, you know, there's two parts to your spiritual, your spiritual fitness and your physical fitness. Right. So the physical fitness, um, part, uh, not only equates to you doing your job, right? Um, because now with the ACFT, some of the standards, you know, it's based off of like MOS and stuff of that nature. And, and in some instances, rank, um, you know, hopefully with the final uh, published standards, you know, we can drill in that a little bit further. But um, it's important, right? The other part about it is that you – you feel better about yourself after you have conducted PT and PT not only um, goes to like your own self self health, but it also goes into team building. It also goes into camaraderie depending on the type of physical fitness that you're um, or physical readiness training that you're conducting. Okay. So I made So the reason I asked you that, cause I know uh, you got some leaders that may not show up to PT or may not actually do PT and stuff like that. And, uh, it's important because soldiers look at stuff like that. Absolutely. Um, and, and again, like it, it goes back to that credibility piece, right? Or that servant leadership piece. So how can I ask you to do something that I'm not willing to do? Or if, if I see my soldiers rolling around in the mud doing grass drills and I should be out there with them. All right. Now keep in mind now, you know, I'm an old man these days. So you know, it's pretty hard to keep up with some of these 17, 18 year olds. But at the same time, I would never ask a soldier to do something that I'm not willing to do. Um, but and, and again, it's, it, it shows that that that, hey, like, you know, we're out here sucking. But my leadership is out here sucking with me. And to be honest with you, as being a leader, I see it as um, I'm competitive by nature. So I see it as, all right, I'm not going to let private so and so outdo me today. Right. Even though like he'll probably smoke me in like a, a, a four mile run, you know, um, but at the same time, he's helping me build my resilience and, and, and my physical fitness up as well too, trying to uh, match his. So it, it's, it's that it's that give and take uh, portion of, of, of leadership. But it's very important, as you alluded to, because um, right now you can look at soldiers um and, and uniform and tell like, hey, like there's there's not a lot of emphasis there. So, yeah. Yes, sir, Major. So another thing, as far as uh, being a leader, so I know you have to speak to soldiers. You might have to speak to a group of soldiers, yes. or uh, at the same time. So I want to kind of get your take on when you briefing soldiers. Uh, do you make sure you are uh, paying attention to what you're saying because you know, as you know, soldiers do listen to to listen to you. Absolutely. So. Uh, as you're coming up and the more um, rank that you obtain, words have meaning. And, you know, if you say something that's not right, you know, your credibility can be shot. 
you know, it, it doesn't take much for your, for you to lose credibility, but at the same time, you want to be as transparent with your soldiers as possible in speaking, you know, you always got to know your audience. You always got to speak to your audience. Uh, that's one of the big key things. So with that, you want to, um, you know, address them, you know, and curtail what you're saying to where they get it without shooting your credibility in the foot. Like a lot of, you know, sometimes you get put in the, pre the predicament where you have to answer, um, you know, people want to know information. They want to know, you know, like what's really happening. But at the same time, you know, wise man doesn't necessarily open his or her mouth without the facts. And I know for, for, you know, for a fact that I have a group of soldiers come to me, they'll speak on something that um, is very sensitive or, uh, or political in nature. And I have to defer because of the, because one is, it may not be the right uh, place or time to speak on that or two, I don't have all the facts, so I don't want to sit there and be spreading libel or um, being slanderous. So I, you know, but again, you, you gotta be, you gotta come correct when you speak to your soldiers, because again, it can come back to, it can come back to bite you for your credibility, you know? Yes, our major. So I got another thing as far as leadership. So do you feel like you abuse your authority, Sergeant Major? Or is it like, do you have to constantly remind people that, Hey, I'm the Sergeant Major. Do do you find yourself have to constantly remind people that? I can honestly say, since becoming a Sergeant Major, I, I or first sergeant or anything like that, I've never had to. I never had to say that to soldiers. I've never had to do that. Um, you know, when you're doing your job, like your your soldiers are going to acknowledge you. They're going to say, you know, they they know and, and they will respect you as a Sergeant Major. Uh, as far as authorities and stuff like that's concerned, um. I, I definitely don't, I don't feel like I, I do it. And I say that, I say that like that because I'm constantly um, delegating authority down, you know, like, again, like I'll have the first sergeants come sit in my seat. I'll have the operation sergeants come sit in my seat because where I'm at, that's the next level. And I'm trying to um, teach them uh, how to be, you know, how not only how to be me, um, and, and be a SAR major, but get their, uh, get them a little bit of exposure. So when they do reach SAR major, they, they have a general idea and they can build up, uh, build up, uh, you know, build that, um, that foundation up. Um, but I don't, I don't have to walk around here, beat my chest. I, I know who I am and the soldiers know who I am as well. Um, you know, so I, I don't feel that, you know, there's no abuse of authority. You know, another thing, too, is humility is a big key with um, with anything like with you being your rank, me being my rank, the colonel being his rank. You know, um, there's there's humility with that, you know, um, because I came up humble. I, I, I pride myself on being humble um, and never like letting the opportunity slip um, uh, to necessarily be humble. So but, yeah, I say all that to say like. I'm not the abusive type with authority. Yes, yeah, our major. I had a uh, my instructor, my ALC instructor, sir, sir, first class master. He would say, uh, "Make sure you leak what's in your chest and not what's on your chest." Absolutely, absolutely. And I, I think that's words. That's definitely a solid words to go by. Yes, yeah, our major. So another thing, as a leader, I know you have to brief information. Mm -hmm. So when it's time for you to brief, what's your process when you get ready to brief info information? So. For a SAR major, right, and I'll speak to the enlisted side. So I'm so I'm that person who focuses on the soldier and or training aspect of what I'm briefing. Um, because like I said, you know, um the most precious commodity that we have in the army are our soldiers. So um I'm so when I when I brief, I have the soldiers at the for um the forefront of my mind, uh followed by training and their in their readiness. Yes, or maybe so do you so when it's time for you to brief information, do you do any type of research on what you have to brief? Absolutely. Um most times when you brief, you want to present as many facts as possible. Um one like when you give a thorough brief, like, you know, it, it shows that you that you care about the topic and that you have researched the topic enough to um either, you know, to get cuz sometimes like briefing has an agenda, right? 
So if I need the um if I need the commander to make a decision that's going to benefit soldiers, then I need to come with all my duckies in a row in order to accomplish that task. If I haphazardly come up and brief, then you know he he may not get a clear enough picture and may make a de- uh, decision that could be detrimental to the organization. So a, a lot of it being his advisor, a lot of it comes with a lot of research. Like um, there are decisions where you have to, um, or briefings where you have to quickly harness information and then spit it out. But, um, and, and that's okay, right? Cause you do the, uh, the best of what you got. But if it's something like deliberate, I would deliberately research in order to uh, come to a positive outcome. And, and all NCOs should do that because of the fact that, again, it, it doesn't just affect you, it affects like everybody under, you know, underneath you uh, in retrospect, you know what I mean? So, Yes, our major. So, uh, again, as being a leader, are you aware that you're being watched by soldiers? Absolutely. You live in a glass house. Um, in certain positions, more glass than, than others, but um, you're constantly being watched, whether you're at, at work, whether you're off post, whether you are on social media, you, you are being surveilled. Like it's, you know, like we don't think about it, but it, it soldiers are definitely watching. People are definitely watching. Yes. Because, uh, people pay attention. I know, say if we are PT and, uh, soldiers see you out there, mm-hmm. they're going to be paying attention to how you reacting. Uh, if you, out there complaining, mm-hmm. they're going to you know it's my lord of morale saying that, hey, Absolutely. I want to go home too. It's the sergeant major. He he is sucking, <laughs> sucking for him out there, so I want to go home too. Absolutely, you're you're right. And as leaders, we can control the the atmospherics. Um, and you're absolutely right. You hit the um, nail right on the head. Um, if if I go out there complaining all the time, or it's like, man, this crap sucks. I'm retiring. Blah blah blah. You know, like, yeah, soldiers are going to, like, well, shoot, if Sergeant Major feels like it's this way, then I I, I want to ETS and I want to do this now, too. Like, and, and that's where I go back to that servant uh, leadership, that influential um, leader. Yes, Sergeant Major. So do you think being a feared leader works? <sighs> being a feared leader will um will get you results, but it comes at a cost. Um. Ruling somebody over fear uh, may work in the near term, but it never it, it, the end game is is horrible. Um, you know, like it it ultimately it can ruin you. It can ruin your career, your reputation, and the more senior that you get in a um, the more senior that you become in the army, you know your reputation is pretty much all you have, right? Because sometimes you get in a position by you know by the work you have done for others. Um, and if you're a fear leader, um, you, you're not going to be as informed because people are going to be scared to come up to you and, and make you aware of certain things. So where every leader has a blind spot, being a fear leader will, will add to that, you know, and you may not know, you may not have a pulse on the morale, the welfare, what's going on in your organization. Um, Again, like the, all the all the leaders that I've seen that I've saw that have um, led through fear, it, it again they got the initial uh, stuff out of out of the troops, but the 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 long term game is it's ne- it never ended well, you know. I've seen some relief, some relief, some uh, a couple of court martials from it. Um, yeah, it, it can it could garnish like. Uh, uh, severe consequences for leading leading through fear. Yes, yeah, our major. I think uh, I feel like if you're yelling all the time, it kind of hides your inability to lead. Absolutely, absolutely. Not to mention that people will become uh, used to you yelling. So, like for instance, right? I don't yell much. I, I I got a voice that carries, but I don't yell much, right? But I guarantee you, right now, if I went next door into the operation cell and actually started to, like, raise my voice and become a little animated, people will scatter because I don't do it on a uh, on another, you know, all the time. I don't see the need to, right, because everybody's an adult here, right? You should be able to have a conversation. So very rare that you'll catch me, like, getting really, really upset and, and start hooping and hollering. It's just, one, that's not me, too. 
I think, you know, you hit the nail on, hey, you're spot on with your assessment that um, you don't need to do that to be an effective leader. Some people, that's just how they are. And I'm not knocking their style. It's just not mine. Yes, sir, Major. Uh, I got another question as far as you being a leader. Are you ever nervous? Cause Absolutely. I know, because Absolutely. I, because I know uh, some – uh, someone told me one time that if somebody's never nervous, that means it's, it's something wrong with them. It is. So, so the nervousness equates to failure, right? Um, even if something is like just doing like a battalion formation and not looking goofy or not looking crazy or saying something crazy up um, in front of everybody, right? When you're when oftentimes when we're nervous, um, you care. You care about the outcome of whatever you're getting ready to do. Like some ser- some service members get um, nervous for taking a, um, a ACFT, is they're nervous because they don't want to fail. They actually care. Um, now, you can be nervous and confident, but when you're cocky and arrogant, <laughs> you will most certainly fail. So those those leaders out there who are never nervous or never scared, um, like I said, could be confident. But when you go into it like, oh, I got this, blah blah blah, boom. And you don't take the consult of others, right? Because I constantly take consult from not only people like peers, um, uh, other seniors, but also soldiers as well, too, because, you know, that's why service, right? Um, but when you don't do that, you most certainly open yourself up for, like, failure. And, you know, and that's one thing that makes me nervous is failing. Um, because if I fail, if I fail, like, again, y'all are affected by it. You know, it's it's something that... Um, that I just can't afford to do like catastrophically, you know. Yes, our major. So, uh, last thing, uh, can you explain to the other leaders out there why is it not why why is it so important not to do negative things over email? So, so this is I'm glad you brought that up. So, over email, so you can't tell the um email. Emails are simply just words, right, that are transcribed. Um, you And it leaves a lot of room for assumptions. So if there's something that's important that – so say, like, for instance, sorry, McPherson, if I need to talk to you and it's something, like, that I need to make sure that um, that you understand the context in which I'm going to uh, – that I'm talking to you, we're either going to do it in person, and if I don't have the time, we're going to do it over the phone. When you send stuff on email, email could be misconstrued into other things. And, um, you know, as human beings, sometimes we get by ourselves and we read a message or read a text message or whatnot. We often we often think negative. So now you have this perception that, you know, what I may say is what I'm saying is negative. But at the same time, what um, you don't mean it that way. Right. So you leave a lot to to the um, to assume, you know, what happens when you assume. So it's very important. And a lot of leaders need to get get away from this habit of sending text messages and sending emails uh, for things that are like super important. It's okay to get out and go meet face to face. Um, If you look at most of our, you know, most of the younger generation out there of leaders and stuff like that. You know, everything is iPad this, you know, uh, FaceTime this, all this other stuff like that. No, like get out. You know, part of that, too, is called battlefield circulation, too. Again, like um, you're looking at body language. You're looking at tone. You're hearing tonations. You, you know, you're looking folks in the eye to get that. So you can make that full assessment of the situation. But doing that as, you know, hiding behind a computer um, you you leave yourself open to a lot of interpretation, which sometimes you just can't have as a leader. Yes, our major. Then emails are permanent. You can't. Uh, they can be documented. Oh, absolutely. Like if you're going to sit there and say something, or if you let's say you get into a, a um a spirited email exchange, right? You leave emails. You open yourself up. Like those emails can be recalled and used against you, depending on the con- You know, uh, depending on what's going on and 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 the context of them, you know? So like I said, it's just important, you know, we need to, uh, I'm not saying emailing is not great, but what I'm saying is, is that like when it comes to like, you know, serious issues that should be done face to face. Um, again, it, it shows 
it shows your soldiers, it shows other leaders that you're that you care because you're willing to come out of your office, go talk to them, have that word exchange, and then come back hopefully with a solution or um, everybody's go back uh, to the think tank to get solutions drawn up, you know? So um, that's why like every once in a while I'll go out to the, to the companies and I'll take that half of my walk and I'll just go out and just say hello and all this other stuff because you don't, you know, with an email, I don't know what's going on, but when I'm going out and I'm looking at people, observing people, looking at body language, I can get the gist of what's going on. I can report back to the commander saying, Hey, Right now, morale is either high or low based off this, 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 this. So. Uh, pre- okay, Sergeant Major. So uh, I would like to thank you for this interview, Sergeant Major. Absolutely. Uh, just informing the soldiers uh, about giving, basically giving your uh, take on leadership. Mm-hmm. So, Sergeant Major, is there anything you want to leave the soldiers with in closing? Look, the, the Army. So what I want to leave in closing is, right, and, you know, this is a – some near to uh, near and dear to me. I'm not trying to throw out like a retention um, pitch or anything like that, but the army is what you make of it. Uh, if you really look at the 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 army the army holistically as a, as a troop, you know, right place, right um, time, right uniform, right. Um, you're you're for the most part you're giving your tools. Uh, we all go through challenge in leadership. We all do. Um, um, you're gonna have great leaders. You're gonna have okay leaders. You're gonna have bad leaders. Um, I most certainly have had that, you know, and I'm pretty sure that any anybody who serve or is serving um, that resonates with. But just just walk through it. Don't be um, so quick to dismiss something in the army because of an exp- one negative experience. Now, I do understand there are some experiences that, you know, um, that definitely affect you in, in, you know, many different ways. We won't get into that. But. What I'm saying is, is that like the in my mind's eye, the army is easy. You just, um, you know, like I said, whether you do it in the military, you do it on the outside. Someone's always going to tell you what to do. So, um, just stick with it. Keep your head up. Um, learn the good and bad from folks, and take what you've learned and apply it over and pay the way forward for for the next set of soldiers. Uh, because after all, it's it's it's. It's like it's like raising generations. You're just trying to prepare the next generation to come behind you and become better leaders than what you were. So and provide them with the tools and negate most situations. So yeah. Okay. Uh there you guys go. Uh this has been another episode of Soldiers Talk the Podcast. And I'll see you guys in formation.